talk about the Pass Labs XA25 power amplifier. And the reason I want to talk about it is because a number of our customers have written to me saying, Harley, you need to check this amplifier out. There's something happening between it and the Sibelius loudspeakers that you need to hear. Now, when customers say that to me, especially if I know from the correspondence we've had together that they really know their stuff, that they've listened to a number of amplifiers before, it's not just it's the only one they've ever heard, heard of, that, you know, some of them, for example, have gone from Hegel H90s to Prima Lunas to different types of amplifier. And then they say to me, you know what, this is the one. This is what matches. Well, I thought, well, I better check it out. And you may remember that last year I did a video on the Pure Audio in one amplifier. It's an integrated amplifier, but I was running it just as a power amplifier. Well, very, very sadly, Gary Morrison, the designer behind the Pure Audio amplifier, has passed away. And in his passing, unfortunately, the production of his amplifiers has stopped. And there's no guarantee of continuity. So I can't recommend his amplifiers to new customers. And also, they were on the expensive side. I mean, the cheapest power amplifier he had was 10,000 euros, which is, you know, really way beyond most people's budgets. So I digress a little, but this amplifier has got a lot of that character. I would say it's as good as the pure audio, to be honest. Okay, there's no, this is not, this particular model is not integrated because I prefer to have a, a separate pre-amplifier with different features in it and, and then just have the power amplifier loudspeaker relationship. If I can get that right, I know that I never need to replace the power amplifier. So recently I went over to London. I was at Art and Sound, AJ's place in West London. And I was listening to a few DACs and some other peripherals. And I n noticed he had one of these on the rack. So we had a very quick listen. I mean, it wasn't for very long. And I thought, oh, that does sound good. So. I contacted Pass Labs and um, they sent me one to review. Now it's been around for quite a long time, 2017 I think it came on the market and I know from a little research that Nelson Pass was designing this amplifier, it was way back as 2013. So I like that in an amplifier, you know, that four years later it's sounding great and there's no XA25 Mark II, Mark III, Mark IV, bigger, better, brighter. I hate all that stuff, to be honest with you. Anybody who knows our speakers know that you've got the Sibelius SG, you've got the Sibelius CG. They're both exactly the same, just a different color of the cones, and there ain't going to be a Mark II or a Mark III. Why? Because we think we've got it right. And you know, maybe that sounds a bit arrogant, but I think it's the same with power amplifiers. You can have a really, really good power amplifier and know that this sound is outstanding, and you can just invest in the money knowing actually it's not going to get any better than this. So Nelson Pass, for those of you who don't know him, is a really renowned designer. Um, he was born in 1951 in America. He, he studied physics at university. By the time he had left university, he had already designed his first amplifiers. He was looking at loudspeaker design and you know, basically, I think he's got, I don't know how many patents he's got to his name, but he's certainly patented quite a few patents in the field of um, amplifier design. So he's really up there with the top designers. And, you know, it's not surprising that he's come up with something which is not only really good, but it's sustainable. Now, what do I like about this amplifier? I like its simplicity. You know, there is nothing, absolutely nothing on this amplifier that is not required. The heat sinks on the left and right are just doing a job. There's no fans, there's no moving components apart from the on off switches. There's four terminals on the back for the loudspeaker connections. There's a power input socket with an on off switch, separate one, and two RCAs. That is it. There is nothing else. Oh, the little blue LED on the front. So the point is that when you've got a really solid design like this, if it sounds as good as it looks in its functionality, you know you're onto a good thing. So how does it sound? Well, 
like in the Pure Audio video, I referred to the Pure Audio 1 being very much like the Audi A6 car. And what did I mean by that? It's high quality, it's beautifully made, and it works. And an Audi A6, if you haven't been in one, is very quiet, it's very comfortable, and there's nothing in it that you, you, you're lacking. This is exactly how I see this amplifier. And the pure audio was just like that, and this is exactly the same. You know, I could very, very happily live with this amplifier for the rest of my days. I don't think I would miss anything. The mid-range is fine, it's not forward, it's not back. If I'm listening to, for example, the Willie Nelson uh, one of album, there's one track on, on his album here, the uh, God's Problem Child, the first track, uh, Little House on the Hill, and there's a snare drum hitting on the first beat of each bar, bang, bang, and it's just behind him. You know, with some amplifiers, when they're exaggerating, that snare jump drum is jumping in front and it's like in front of him and it's annoying it's in the way no no this amplifier's got it just right behind him on that track there's also some harmonies and the engineer has moved those harmonies immediately behind him so at first you wouldn't even notice the harmonies on the chorus but you think oh yeah there's a harmony there's a lady and there's a man okay and they're just very slightly behind and wide of him and this amplifier is able to depict that and, 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 and reproduce it fine. So the bass is beautifully detailed. A long bowed double bass is very hard for amplifiers to reproduce. Um, but this does it effortlessly and it gets the single drive cone of the Sibelius SG completely under control. You know, that there's no flappiness to it. It's not just boom, 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 boom. There's real detail and there's warmth and it sounds very, very nice indeed. It's relaxing. I, I could listen to music for hours with this amplifier without having any kind of fatigue whatsoever. And I think that Dennis and my other clients have got it absolutely right. There is something that works extraordinarily well between this and the single drive cone of the Sibelius loudspeaker. Because we've got no filters and there's nothing in between, the amplifier has to really get the drive cone under control. And it's not exaggerating in the high end. The high ends are very, very open and smooth. They're there, but they're not exaggerated. And that's exactly what I would be looking for in an amplifier. So, as I say, it's not cheap. It's around five thousand pounds um, six thousand euros but I think if you bought one of these it wouldn't be a bad investment because I think because of the reputation of its designer because of the quality of its build not only do I believe it will work for decades I think it will hold its value as well because of the fact that it's it's you know it's, it's got heritage and I I think I can really recommend this uh, for new customers and for customers who've bought our speakers first and who are looking for an amplifier but didn't have the budget at the time. I think I could recommend this because, yeah, they'll be able to buy it, keep it, fit it, forget it and enjoy the music. And after all, that's what it's all about. So I hope you like this little review. I will put the technical details in the description. It's 25 watts per channel, just let me tell you that, into 8 ohms. Don't think for one minute that that's not enough. It's plenty, plenty. This little preamplifier that I've been using is the Quad Artera. I've got it on its normal gain. It's at 500, roughly running around 500 millivolts output which is really quite low for most power amplifiers, and this is giving me loads of punch. Not for one moment do I think there's not enough. I've heard it drive a pair of Magicos as well, and it did well. I mean, it was, there was no problems, but this, but the Sibelius are, you know, are much easier to drive. Um, and so this is really powerful enough. Don't think for one moment that you will need more paired with a, a speaker like the Sibelius. So, as I say, I hope you enjoyed this video. Enjoy your music. I will be back soon with another video where I will be extending the conversation on what makes a great recording. I'll be coming out with a part two with a, another recommendation. 
and uh, we'll be publishing soon the Spotify playlist of all the recommendations that you have already supplied to me. So thanks very much for that and I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy the music. Bye.